This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <laughs>
inner search on, the, on this topic, on those issues of money, that I found that I always received money when I really needed it, but I was still upset on Hashem on why I don't have more. Always when I had to pay my rent, I received it finally. And even sometimes it came with shame. Sometimes I had to take a loan or something, but in the end of the day, I, somehow there was a solution in my life to all of my problems. Something was rolling me from one stage to the next, always moving forward and forward. I never like hit the wall and, and here I am alive and like, it was a nice lunch today, everything was good. We're eating, everything is, is good. So I saw that Hashem Baruch is supplying my needs, always supplied everything I needed, but in the right time, by His calculations, not by mine. I want to have $10 million extra in my, my, my bank account. For sure, everyone wants to have luxuries and to have all the options and the abilities to do whatever he wants, to fly first class and to pay and to make and to invest, whatever, everyone got his thoughts, but my, my, my frustration from my life situation was not because that really I was lack of something, was just because that I was not satisfied from the way that Hashem was supplying what that He was supplying. Means He gave me everything I needed. He paid my bills, He paid my rent, He paid my mortgage, He paid my everything, my shopping, everything. He bought things for my children, everything I had in the right time. But I wanted it to come earlier. Oh, I wanted to have spare, I wanted to have more. So my frustration was not really from the lack of money, because in the end of the day I got the money. My frustration was that things were not going by my way, like I wanted them to be. So certain things like those you can understand about yourself when you're judging yourself, and then you can learn who you are, and then you can work on your issues and you can really work on the real problems that you have. Because just to blame your friends, to blame your boss, to blame your parents, to blame the business, to blame people, to blame yourself, it's a waste of words, it's a waste of, of anger, of thoughts, of emotions, because really you're not aiming to the truth. It's not the real truth. Something else is going on inside of you that is pushing you to the corner. That person that pushed you to the corner, and now because of that situation, you explode on him, and you start screaming at him, and you rebuked him, and you blessed him, and whatever happened, happened. You're not going to blame him. He told me. He came. You're going to blame yourself. You're going to blame your family. I was tired. I was not focused. I had other things in my mind. Go deeper. Go to deeper layers, and then you're going to understand certain things about yourself. What is the reasons for those reasons? Go in, into a deeper layer of your spirit, of your emotions, of your memory, and search deeper meaning and deeper reason for the actions that took place in your life. Now that person annoyed me. Okay, why he was annoying me? If he would come tomorrow, tomorrow it wouldn't annoy me. Today it annoyed me. Why? Because of another phone call that I had five minutes before. When I'm checking myself, I'm realizing, reminding myself that I was already under a huge amount of pressure before he came and he was just the final hit with the hammer on my, on my head to kill me. But he was not the real reason for my tense, for my pressure. Okay, so the other phone call. Who was I talking to? What we were discussing? Oh, now I remember. That issue. That topic. Okay, why that topic is bothering me so much that I'm cheating myself after? That, that pressure is pushing me to such places that I'm forgetting my essence, that I'm forgetting who that I am. I'm breaking my own agreement with myself never to scream on other people, never to be upset, not to raise my voice, and then go back. Okay, now, about that phone call, again, that conversation on that topic pushed so much stress on me. Why? Why that topic from all the rest of the topics is pushing me to the corner in such a way? 
putting so much pressure on my back. When you're going to make that investigation, you're going to understand that you are a little child that never got over certain things in his progress, a process of development and haven't matured yet, haven't completed himself yet in certain things. He's still afraid to deal with certain thoughts, is not able to, to accept certain kinds of insultings or rebukes, is too ashamed of himself, has got too much to hide, afraid to expose the truth, doesn't want to deal with certain life experience that he experienced. Certain things that will open for you the access to judge yourself favorably on that mistake that you made today in the afternoon that you were screaming on someone. You can understand that that was only a result of a different thing that goes on, a certain storm that runs inside of your stomach, inside of your soul, inside of, of, of your being, emotional being, that you still don't know how to deal with and you're so scared to deal with and you don't want to do that because of your fear. And now you can have mercy on yourself. Now you can accept yourself. Now you can work on yourself and heal yourself. Because now you're touching the truth. That is the real reason of why you were screaming on that person that came to your office today. So, if you will try to work on yourself in front of that person, look for him, apologize in front, okay, maybe also a good thing to do. It's not gonna solve your problem when another person will come in a few days from now and he will come also after another phone call or a text message that will wake up the same fear and anxieties inside of you, you will explode again. It can be a cab driver, it can be someone in the street, it can be your best friend or your wife or, or whatever, your child. And you're gonna lose your mind because you haven't solved your emotional problem. Because you didn't touch the truth. But when you're going to touch the truth, so then the blessing of Hashem Barach will start healing you. So for that you need to commit yourself to the truth. And to want it. And when you start wanting it, you will not going to be so scared anymore from the results of those investigations. Because you're going to desire the truth. You're going to be mevakesh Hashem. You're going to ask for Hashem. You're going to ask for the truth. When you're going to find the truth, like that King David said, Sasa nochi al imratecha, I'm happy. I'm running after your words. Kemotze shalal rav, like I'm finding huge treasures, like I'm finding loot, like I'm finding diamonds, gold. Like, wow, thank you Hashem. Those are the words of Hashem that is speaking to us from the creation. That every particle of this the, the, of the surrounding is, is the mouth of Hashem that is telling us all of the time Anochi Hashem Elokecha I am Hashem, I'm your God Asher Otsetich HaMeretz Mitzrayim that I took you out of Egypt and I'm willing to help you and I love you in endless love and I'm calling you my child I'm calling you my son, my daughter I'm marrying you, I'm taking you I'm supporting you, I'm helping you I'm also rebuking you when you're falling asleep I'm waking you up and I'm giving you the right advice and I'm waking you up from inside that your heart is knocking and waking you up with your thoughts and your emotions and, and your regret and all of the feelings that you have feel from inside and also from the outside the people are coming and situations are taking place in your life to wake you up and I'm communicating with you and I'm talking to you and I'm touching you my child all of the time all of the time I'm waking you up to observe and to find and to look for me and when you start looking for Hashem then you will find him Always, and every moment of your life will be a moment of the development, will be a moment of, 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 of growth. Amazing moments of, of, of spiritual experiences that will uplift you to places that you never dreamt that are exist at all. Because we don't know how huge is the power that the Creator treasured inside of us. You are channeled from inside to infinity to the Creator Himself. One person cannot bring the redemption. One person can show a good example to other people how to connect themselves to the Creator. Like that our first 
noble father, Abraham, he was that example for the world, the head of the believers. What was he doing? He was searching. He went out from the cave that he was hiding in, and he was looking to the sky, and he saw the moon, and he saw the light, and he, uh, the sun, and he asked himself, what are those? Maybe they're running the creation. I see they're going in circles, and I see that they're shining, and their light is illuminating the world. So he realized that they're important. So he, he was questioning. He was investigating. He was asking and thinking. This is why I'm so against those negative methods that are depressing the natural nature of a person to investigate and to ask. People are saying, we're not talking about that. We're not asking those kind of questions. We're not discussing those topics. You're not allowed to mention those things. Why? Why are you so afraid to talk? Let's touch every single aspect of our faith. Let's check it. Even Hashem is telling us, You should check me. On what Hashem is saying, check me? that I promise you that I'm going to open the sky, the heaven for you to influence huge amounts of bounty that you won't be able to thank me enough on what that you're going to receive, Hashem is saying. On the biggest blessings of them all, Hashem is saying, test me, test me on that. So we're afraid to test Him. Why are you so afraid? You're afraid not to be answered? You're already standing in that position that you feel that you're not being answered. So go and talk. Say the truth. Go and spill your heart. Go and speak it all out. Say every feeling that you feel to Hashem. Tell Him, I'm a broken vessel. I'm so wounded. I'm so scarred. I lost my stability. I lost the desire for life. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't feel like praying anymore. I don't want to learn Torah. I don't feel like it. Please save me. Please help me. Those are the broken prayers that will bring redemption. <coughs> Those are the prayers that will expose your real desire to serve. Because now you're just hating yourself on not having the opportunities to learn that you can't find the right time in your busy schedule, packed schedule that you have to fit some hour in, in shul, in synagogue, that you can't find the time to do hit bodadut, that you don't have the money to buy the ticket to Uman, whatever. You, you always go on the external layer, on the outside layer of your life. And instead of really investigating, hey, why do I in the world want to go to Uman? Why really the truth? Why am I not going to pray in the synagogue? The truth. Not blaming my wife on us having children. I wanted the children, so why am I going to blame the children? I don't want them, so you can um, give them for adoption. You don't like your children, you, wa uh, you love the children. Okay, great, so, so be happy. They're not the reason that you don't go to synagogue. Oh no, my wife, she's not helping me. Oh, okay, so you're not satisfied for my wife. Okay, so divorce her. Why you don't go? Why you don't go? Say the truth. Say the truth. Admit. That you have other issues that you rather not to solve, that you rather not, rather not to deal with. Other issues and topics that are bothering you, and you know that if you're now going to tell your wife, hey, I'm going to the synagogue, she will start bringing other issues that you don't want to discuss. So you choose not to discuss those issues and not to go to the synagogue. So don't blame her, blame yourself that you're too coward, too scared to deal with reality, that she will tell you, now you want to go to the synagogue, or she's going to have a list of complaints, right? You don't want to deal with those complaints. You rather to judge her and not favorably, and to put all your blamings on her back, and to say that because of her, and because of him, and because of this and that, and you're going to kill everyone, instead of dealing with reality, that she is also a person. Hi, you remember? You wanted to get married with me. You wanted us to build a house. You promised A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Where are all of those? You didn't supply all of those things. You're not helping. You're not in the house. All day long you're bitter and you're angry and you're frustrated and you have your desires and you have your lusts and you have your complaints and you have your moods and you have your downs and I need to think about you and to consider your mood and to think about you and to remember all of your small things and all of the things that you... What do you want from her? 
She's a person, she's a human being, and you're ignoring her spiritual being, her emotional being, her physical being, and you just like blocked her. She's that, mm, that one to, to, to get all the blamings and, and all the insultings and all the shame and, and disgrace. And you're an angel that can't find time to fit your holiness into the synagogue to pray in a minion. It's a joke. It's a joke. And it's only because that you're too scared to deal with reality. Only too scared to deal with reality that you're a human being that needs a tissue. Too scared to deal with reality that you're a human being. And instead of hating yourself on your lackings, and on your weaknesses, you should judge yourself favorably and understand yourself that also you too scared to deal with that list of obligations that you can find yourself fulfilling and fixing and taking care of. And that also you have a problem and you don't know how to raise your children and you don't know how to Take the responsibility on yourself like you thought that you're going to be able to. And more and more issues. Now, by blaming them, you're drifting away from the truth. And in the end, if you're going to try in one shot, in one moment, to take all the responsibility on yourself, like we're presenting it now in class, so you can also kill yourself from your self-blamings, hating yourself on all of your lackings. And instead of all of that, Try to develop a real relationship with yourself and to build yourself step by step and to understand, yes, it's true. I promised her a long list of promises, but I found myself lack of advice with no sources, with no advice, with no knowledge, with no support. And today I need to deal with those things. The only way to deal with those things is with truth is to discuss those things. And instead of blaming her and then blaming yourself, or blaming yourself and then blaming her, blaming yourself, blaming them, blaming them and then blaming yourself, just be honest and deal with your reality. It's better to say I'm scared. It's better to say, you know, we need to learn how to talk and we need to sit and to learn how to have a conversation and to solve our problems one after the other. We have so many issues that are being discussed on the table and most of, most of them are not being really taken care of. Let's try to learn how to speak about those things in a way that will not gonna explode in the house. Let's try to work on those things. And that is the best way to solve problems. If it's in Shalom Bayit, peace in the house with you and your wife, with your wife and, and her husband. If it's with yourself and the list of defaults that you find in yourself. If it's your attributes, if it's your life situations. Take one at a time and discuss it and talk about it. If it's with yourself, if it's with Hashem. If it's to consult and to talk with your friends about that issue. If it's to share in the family and to sit and to talk. And to take those things one step at a time. And not to be scared from the results. Not to be scared from the shame of you feeling that you have a lacking. So what if you have a lacking? You're a human being. You must have lackings. Because this is the nature of your creation. You, as a holy, amazing, fantastic soul, trap in a physical body. And that body that is physical got his nature that he can break, that he can collapse, that he cannot hold in not too much, that sometimes that he's just failing, that he's losing his, his balance. That's your physical nature. It's not something to blame you on. This is the vehicle that you received from heaven. It cannot hold more than it can hold. You are who that you are in a vehicle that that is the vehicle that you received. With your skills, with your talents, with your life trauma, with your patterns, with your fears, with your anxieties, with your foreign thoughts, with your depressed thoughts, with your awful memories. 
This is who the Hashem sent you to be in this creation, in this world. And you need to find the good from it. You need to take out the good from life and to work with it. So, sometimes in relationship when people are trying to work on, on certain things in life, so they're trying to have a conversation and that conversation is is causing a, a huge fight and and even worse emotions and feelings than were before and from those arguments we're so scared of and that's why we rather not to deal with all of our problems many times but I found a very nice way that works also to choose not to talk about everything at once to say to your soulmate, to your friend, look, I want to take care of your complaints on me. I want to take responsibility on those things, but I'm checking myself and I see that it's too much for me to deal with all of my lackings, but I'm willing to do that. And I need your help. I want us to talk every day or once a week or whatever, depends on your schedules, for 20 minutes, for half an hour, and not to jump from one topic to the other, and not to talk if it's getting too hard. I want us to present the problems that we have and just to discuss it a little bit. You will say one thing, I will listen. I'm not gonna interfere in your words. We're not gonna take it to an argument. You're gonna tell me what you think. I'm gonna respond. You're gonna answer back and I'm gonna respond and that's it for today. Let's talk just like that for 20 minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes today. And just going to bring up one issue. And then I'm going to think about it today after our conversation. And we're going to continue that conversation tomorrow. Let's try to talk about it calmly and slowly. And it's true. Also, those short conversations can lead to big arguments. No one is guaranteeing and promising you that things will not gonna go wild outside and, and, and suddenly certain emotions will explode and, and will, will be a mess. But it will be in a measure. If you have the right preparation and the right will to learn from life and you're willing to discuss those issues and you want to solve them so when you will be rebuked, when you're going to hear about your lackings, you not, it's not going to kill you as hard as if you were not ready and were not willing at all to hear that rebuke. And for you, that was an area that was top secret. Please don't, do not enter. And you just like reject everyone from getting into your zone, into your area. When you're preparing yourself to a conversation, to a negotiation, so then you have more tools to deal with the result, with the explosion of, of your emotions, of your friend's emotions. And you will be able, slowly, slowly, one step after the other, to take care of those problems and to heal them. And if you're finding yourself in a situation that there is something that you're not willing to talk about, that it's too much, so you can say that. It's okay to say the truth. Say, look, I understand, I disappointed you on that issue, but it's too much for me. I'm afraid to fail. I don't want to fail you, I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to fail myself, or I failed you too many times. Be honest. It's beautiful. This is who that you are. Say, I'm sorry. Say the truth. Apologize. Say, okay, I don't know how to deal with it. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm carrying too much trauma from, from my broken house. I feel like my father is too much in the picture. I, I like it's too much for me. Say the truth. Expose your emotions. Don't be so scared to deal with your emotions. Your fear is the tool that the evil inclination is using against you that you will not reach the truth. So he puts fear on you. 
And you, afraid to cross that wall, that separation, that terrifying war zone, when all your treasures are behind that smoke screen, behind that wall. If you're just going to confront those fears, you will reach your goal. You will be in the zone of truth. You will reach Hashem. And Hashem, His light is the light of truth. So when you're going to reach the truth, you're going to reach Hashem, and then blessing going to heal and recover all of your problems, all of your trauma. going to heal you, and you won't be scared anymore. Sometimes those are mountains of darkness, mountains of fears, things that has many layers, many stages, many levels of, 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 of search, of investigation, of understandings that are required to break that code, to find the answer to your problem. But when you will be stubborn, consistent, continue walking toward the goals of your life to find the truth about yourself, about who that you are, and to take responsibility on who that you are, you will find the right answers. You can find the blessing of Hashem it Barach. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So call Him with truth. Tell Him, I'm shy. I'm embarrassed. I failed so many times. I failed myself. I don't know what to do. The truth is that you never failed. And you never failed yourself. And you're just afraid to admit that you're so gentle and fragile. You want to be a, a, a big shot. You want to be a superstar. You want not to fail. You want to be above this world only because you're afraid to deal with your fears. But your fears, they are your enemies. And if you're going to destroy them, stare into the eyes of fear, in the eyes, you're going to melt those fears. They're going to disappear like smoke. They will vanish from your life forever. You will never going to see them again. You will be like Moses that was able to walk into the darkness, into the cloud, into the fog, because Hashem is over there. When your desire will be the truth, nothing going to hurt you ever. Nothing in the world will kill you, will destroy you. Even shames and insultings. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that the main way to do tshuva, to come back completely to Hashem, is Shishma bizyono yidom v'yishtok, that he will listen to the rebukes and will be quiet. Listen, listen. They are th those things that are shaming you now, that are hurting your, your emotions now, that are reminding you of, of past horrible memories from your childhood or, childhood or wherever, those are the hints of Hashem to remind you of your mission, of what you need to work on, on what you need to take responsibility, on your life challenges. And if you will just desire them, you will clean them and fix them. And that's how you clean for Pesach also, by the way. That's how you clean your heart from Hametz for Pesach. When you want to clean your house for Pesach, to every person, it's, it's, it's a joke to say for every man, because men are, are so lazy, it's, it's, it's horrific. It's like it's a disease. They cannot clean. They're so lazy. They're so far from tshuva. I thought about it. What going to do Admorim, big rabbis, like imagine to yourself today now, big rabbis that you know from life, from reality, not those angels in the time of Gemara, rabbis that you know, big people, heads of institutes, chief rabbis. Okay, now I want to see what's going to happen. Chas shalom, I don't want to see. I don't want to see no one suffer. But just in your mind, imagine, put that huge person now, two weeks before Pesach, in his house, alone, without his wife, without his children, without his students, and I want to see him taking care of cleaning the house for Pesach. What is he doing? 
Where is all of the halachot? Where are all of the rules? Where are all of the... the, 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 the to be medakdeg, that everything, that you won't leave no crumb, that you won't have no stain, even no taste of flour in the... in the... in the... In the in the, in the in your pure marble stone in the kitchen. What are you doing with all of those halachot? I want to see if he will start scrubbing the, the tiles and the, and the closets and inside and out and all the, all the, all the pot, pans and pots that he got in his house and between the cracks and on the top shelves like, how many of them are going to do that? Okay, so what are they going to do? You don't have an external, so you don't have an outside solution. You don't have someone to call. Okay, you are you with your house to Pesach. How can you have complaints on your wife when she's breaking her back and her fingers and her mind on taking care of all of those things? And you can help her one hour a day or two hours a day or you know what? You're still young, you're helping four hours a day, following her orders, listening to what that she tells you to do, because you don't know how to take responsibility on cleaning your own house. You don't know how to do that. You're so limited. You made yourself to be so useless and so lazy because you don't want to do those things. So you rather to put it on the wife and that she's gonna do it, and she's taking care of this, and she's taking care of that, and she's taking care of this and that, and everything is under her. And you, freelancer, learning the halachot, that you're gonna know what to tell her, and in the end of the day, you don't know even how to answer properly. Because you're full of anger and, 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 and arrogance that, that you don't know how to collect all of your thoughts together because of the pressure. And the pressure is not because that it's already Passover, that in two days the house needs to be clean. Don't lie to yourself. If that was your pressure, you would put yourself on your knees and start scrubbing the, the cabinets and, and cleaning the, the walls, but you're not doing it. You're just blaming. Because it's easier for you to blame someone else and to make up stories of your pressure and to say that it's because of Pesach, because of Pesach, and actually it's only because you don't want to deal with the fact that you don't want to clean, that you don't want to stand <laughs> in that position, that it's your obligation to take care of all of the chametz out of the house, even those tiny crumbs of cookies that you're eating in your living room and not here. And you don't want to deal with those things. The way to clean chametz for Pesach, it's to go all the way with the cleaning. To every person that ever in his life tried really to clean chametz for Pesach, he can see that in the first look, when you see the problem, so you say, okay, I'm gonna take care of it. And then when you come closer, suddenly you find more chametz, and you find more chametz in deeper layers, and you find it harder to scrub it and to remove it, and you find yourself that you need more things and, 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 and more materials and more time to dedicate and more effort, and after one hour and a half, she's asking you, what? You haven't finished even that? And the answer is no. Why? Because it's a hard job to clean completely for Pesach. And that's only physically. Emotionally, spiritually to clean, it's exactly the same, just even deeper. But the person that will take on himself that job, seriously, will find himself clean in the end. Not like all the rest of those that will find themselves not clean. Not physically, their house for Pesach, not emotionally, their emotional bodies, they will still hate themselves and be sad and depressed and angry. And not spiritually, they will not gonna understand their real potential. They will never gonna meet their real self. You can meet and find your true self only after removing all of your patterns, all of your way of behaviors. Only when you remove all of your automatic reactions, all of your patterns, 
you can find your true self. Because when you are just reacting to situations automatically, so it's not you, it's your fears, it's your will of not dealing, your will not to deal with who that you are, that is attacking instead of taking responsibility and being who that you are, being honest about this point. So you choose to attack because you don't want to express your hidden emotions and then you can never find your true self. So the first thing is to take responsibility on who that you are and not to act and not to fight and not to argue and to be quiet in the time of argument and to listen to the voice of Hashem that is telling you what that He thinks about you, what that He wants you to take seriously, to work on your true self, on your real being, to find your essence, the purpose of your life, to find your true self. This is our mission. Before we get into that point, before we're reaching that truth, that we still at least having that desire desire for the truth, we haven't even started. This is what the Zara Kadosh is saying, that a person that have not started his tshuva process, he doesn't have no existence in the world at all. You, you're not exist. You're just a, 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 a balloon that is full with imaginations. You're not yourself. You're not exist here. You're not, you are not here. Your fears are here. Your, your, your ways of running away from commitment and from responsibility are here. But you are not here. You're running away. And you live your anger and you live your sadness and your whinings and your complaints and your rebukes. It's not you. Those are the armors. Those are the tools, the weapons that you chose to defend yourself from being hurt again. Okay, but it's not you. So it's not the truth. So all of your sadness and all of your anger are not you. And there are lies that you're choosing to lie to yourself and to your surroundings because you don't want to express and expose your true self. But when you're going to take responsibility on it and start moving them out from your life, dealing with them with truth, with mercy, admitting, I'm sorry I was upset. I'll tell you why. The last thing that you said put a lot of pressure on me. So now, hey, breathe. You need to understand that if she pushed a lot in that point, she had the reasons. When you're going to tell her that she put that stress on you, she will tell you what was making her so stressed that she had to give you some. Because she had her own reasons. So. Your will to work on yourself will also will give you the ability to help other people along the way. You're not only going to help yourself, you're also going to find a way to help him, to help all of your friends, all of those people that you come in touch with during your life. When you will be a person of truth, you will share that truth. You will tell in an honest way about your spiritual journey, on your emotional journey, on your life and wisdom that you, the wisdom that you, that you achieved through your life experience. And, and, and when you will share it, you will give other people the ability, like our father, Abram, the ability to find their own route to connect themselves to the Creator, by themselves, from within. Not by following you or learning from you, being your students or whatever. That's all nonsense. Just by finding their inner root, their inner channel, their inner connection to the Creator that created them in His shape, with His nature of being spiritual, endless, with endless power and potential. But we need to find that. And to find that, for that we need to want the truth. We need to desire the truth. Like that it's written, you should love Hashem Elokecha with all your heart, with all your spirit, with everything you have. 
Everything Hashem gave you, you need to use it to love Hashem. To love Hashem, it's to listen. To one that you love, you listen. He's talking to you all day long. All day long He is communicating with you through the walls, through people, through conversation, sights that you see, thoughts that you have. In your mind He's talking to you. In your heart He's talking to you. He's surrounding you and filling you from inside. He's everything and there's nothing except of Him for you. And you need all of the time to respect the world because it's Him. So you respect His creations. You respect His outfits, His coverings. It's all Him. And you respect Him. And you deal with your life with honor, with respect, with love, with dignity, with truth, with responsibility, with all good manners and, and behaviors and attributes and you fix it all and you become a complete righteous man. Amen. Okay, got it? Shakoach, go to work. Hashem will bless you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing. Hashem will bless you, will make you happy campers and you won't have no lackings in your life ever. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.